Sega Dreamcast is nothing to do with this video. It was just a handy platform so that I'm not filming on the floor. But if you've read the title of this video, you know it's about a arcade controller. It's what it's called. I, I guess that's what the title of the video will be. I actually haven't decided. But yes, um, this is about a weird plug and play system that I thought was mildly amusing. Um, as you can see, very much based on an N64 controller. These sorts of things are often based on other controllers because they want to be a bit of a rip-off. And um, if you are British, you might recognise that sticker. That's because this was indeed uh, distributed by Debenhams, um, which is like a big department store in the UK, if you are not familiar with it. Um, fans of Ashens will note the 0-3 Sad Onion. Um, and I don't know how much this cost, it was a gift. Also, astonishingly low quality uh, screenshots on the back. But they are screenshots of what's on the uh, console. And if you're familiar with uh, early NES and Famicom games, you might recognise this one. We'll get on to that when we actually have a look at the uh, console. So yes, includes 200 games. Yes, but also no. Uh, again, we'll get on to that. Um, people who know what you know, who are familiar with, you know, plug and play things, uh, they'll know why. Two hundred games is true and false, and connects directly to your TV because it's a plug and play console. I mean, it's a console in general. That's the point of consoles; they connect to your TV. Nothing on the bottom other than tape. So let's open the box up, and there's nothing because I bothered to put it back in the box frankly but this is what it comes packaged in the plastic and a couple of uh, leaflets I think this is warranty or information stuff and this is a manual in like 5,000 languages because Europe let's have a look at the English one obviously since it is distributed by like a proper big store it doesn't it, it doesn't have like bad English or anything it's just generic you know, you know English is fine and all that uh, no, that is one page. Identifying parts of the Retro Games Controller. Directional pad, joystick, buttons. Power, AV. Yes. Connect the white and yellow plugs. Yes, composite video. Yeah, it, that, that's all. It's a plug and play system. Let's look at the system itself. It's very small. Um... Yeah, very tiny, obviously based on the N64 controller. Debenhams Retail Limited. That's where the batteries go in. Don't chuck it in the bin. Um, unlike fake Chinese consoles, that will probably be a real uh, European safety certificate, even. But yeah, this is the controller. It's astonishingly small. It kind of <laughs> cramp your... Well, not really cramp, but just very awkwardly hold it because it's tiny. But yeah, it's got a directional pad. It's got what it calls, well I suppose it is a joystick, at least it doesn't pretend it's an analog stick or something. A, B, rotate and play. No, that's A, B, start and reset. Power switch there, A, V in there. D-pad is a bit mushy, um, it's not amazing, but it's, I've used worse, a Xbox 360. And the joystick ain't great. I mean, it works fine, um, but you, you're going to want to use the D-pad for the most part. It's more comfortable anyway, somewhat. That's where you turn it on. It has a little LED that causes the camera to lose focus. And that's where the AV cables go in. And yes, as you can tell in the manual, that's where it goes into the console. Somewhat like a 3.5mm jack, but I think it is a bit narrower, so it'll be something smaller than 3.5mm. And yes, composite video in with mono audio, which means I'm probably going to have to um, edit the audio uh, in post so that it doesn't just come out of the left speaker. Fantastic. And also it's going to look rubbish. And the capture card is going to pick it up as interlaced video if it's not already been sent as interlaced video. I can't tell because my TV sees it as interlaced video anyway. But yeah, I will uh, switch to recorded footage from the capture card 
I'll go through a few games uh, for various reasons. I'm not going to go through all 200. The reasons will become clear after I've turned it on. So this is the system turned on. It goes directly into a menu with no music. Um, so yeah, it does indeed have 200 listings. Let's go through a few. Uh, let's start with the first game, F22. It's like a rubbish shoot 'em up. I just adjusted the um, volume on my TV in case you heard the clicking. Uh, and of course, uh, things are going to look a bit sort of weird because of composite video quality. Um, you may also hear me pressing buttons. Oh look, I got a power up. I mean, it's this game. I guess is vaguely competent. Oh, I can just hold the button. I don't have to uh, mash it. That makes things easier. Uh, B does nothing. And this is very boring. 1943, this ain't. Well, of course not, because 1943 is a good game. This is really competent, but very boring. No, I don't want to continue. Ah, that's better. Well, they're out racing fighter. Oh, look, it's one of those games where it's like a top-down thing. And you have fuel, and you can go left and right, and you crash and explode. Enough of that. That game's very annoying. Vanguard, or I think Vanguard, I think, as the uh, menu showed. I can't remember. But it's a very, very slow tank game. Um, you know, it, it's very slow and scrolls right at the top of the screen. And the video output makes the trees look very flickery when you scroll. Not helped by the fact that it's having to deinterlace because both the capture card and TV are seeing this as an interlaced uh, source. I actually had to fiddle around with OBS settings in order to even get it to show up. It wouldn't originally show up uh, in the capture program for the card itself. And uh, oh no, I accidentally pressed reset because that was boring. Animal blocks. It's it's mahjong. It's the sort of Shanghai variant of mahjong. It works. It's very slow and boring. Magic Johnny, or Joni, or Johnny. I don't know how you supposed to pronounce it. And this one has a half infamous, uh, hilarious story write up, which is very bad. The written. Um, I'm going to skip it because I can't be bothered. Take note of how that uh, screen looks when it shows like the stage and score and stuff. And basically, this is just a very bad game. We like do that. You just run around and uh, eat things, and you have to press B to uh, open up your flower to the left, and A to do it to the right instead of it just being based on what direction you're facing. Also, the controls seem to be sticking horribly, and. Oh no, you can't press it while you're... If you press A or B while you're walking, it just stops. Also, there doesn't seem to be a way out of that area. Don't worry, I'm not going to go through all of the uh, games. I'm just going through the first page here. Aerial Warfare, which appears to be a half ripoff of uh, Sega's Zaxxon. I think it's Zaxxon. You know, the really old Sega arcade game where it's isometric and you're like flying this spaceship thing and you die because it's isometric and a bit odd. Though in Zaxxon there's like a, a, a helpful like height meter. This does not have that. And also up is down and down is up, which I normally prefer in behind the uh, back uh, plane games. But uh, for this it's a bit awkward. Oh good, it spawned me right on top of an enemy and I got a game over. What a shame. Uh, was it crystal ball or pindable crystal ball no it has nothing to do with pinball although uh, hold any thoughts you may have about pinball basically this game is weird I don't really know what it is you just walk around and avoid things and it's a bit boring uh, it looks like you're playing as a gormless uh, M&M maybe I don't know I'm gonna turn it off 
Police dog Lassie. Lazzy. These are very badly written. Oh yeah, this is the game where a burglar like hides some stuff and you have to go and find them, but I'm too lazy to even entertain the idea of playing that. And you can get around the menu by either pressing up or down when you're at the bottom or top, or by pressing left or right, or you can skip many pages by pressing A and B. I guess that's somewhat, uh, you know, thoughtful. But yeah, that's... Oh, look! Pong Pong! That's probably Pong, isn't it? Except if you're familiar with these systems, no it's not. It's a horrific game where you try to uh, bump your know, enemies into like the holes at the side, and then you die, and it's really bad. Because it controls, instead of like say pressing down, you have to press left and right to steer as if it's micro machines or something. Except micro machines is actually fun, unlike this. Hmm. So the games can demonstrate some points about this console. Or just, I want to remember what they are, because frankly I don't touch a lot of these games. Ah oh, yes, it's a slow submarine uh, simulator. Oh look, there's a band on the radar at the bottom. Let's rotate very slowly and not be able to move my uh, reticle diagonally. Oh no, I missed. Let's press the button again. Hooray! I am now the master of the universe, I think, as Ashens would put it. Let's try a different game. Ah, water pipe is one that actually works relatively okay. I mean, it's a bit boring, but it works. Basically, you get given pipes at the top of the thing, and you just have to connect the top to the bottom. It works vaguely competently. Uh, no. No, I want one that goes downwards. Of course, it's random, so, you know. But it works, it's fine, but it's a little boring and the music will drive you crazy. Ah, move box. In the name, you think it might be soccer bar, but no. It's Towers of Hanoi, and it's very irritating Towers of Hanoi. Oh yeah, and it tells you how to beat it. We know how Towers of Hanoi work, especially if you uh, have done any form of uh, computing sort of stuff. Hmm. Ah, Fish War. Now, uh, this is where things start to get a little bit dubious for this little console. Yes, as you can see from the demo, this is quite clearly Balloon Fight. Controls exactly the same, you can either press A or hold B. Except it plays a maddening loop of music over the entire thing. Instead of the Balloon Fight music. But, what if you wanted to play Balloon Fight? I mean, you could just, you know, grab it on a uh, an actual Nintendo system, or you could play Zero Gravity, and um, it's very shameless. It actually has the Balloon Fight music. If I uh, just, I mean, you can hear it right now. But if I beat the level in just a sec, no, don't get hit. I said beat the level. Yeah, you can hear the balloon fight theme. Also, uh, note that this is running at a uh, 50 hertz PAL uh, speed and uh, resolution, so that's why everything does seem a bit slow if you're familiar with all the Nintendo games that are on here. Oh, spoiler! Um, yeah, I mean, if you're familiar with how balloon fight sounds, this does sound slow, but that's well, I would say not necessarily a fault of the console, but it doesn't even use like PAL optimized versions of games. I don't think, well, I don't know how optimized the PAL versions of these games were, but they don't seem to be PAL optimized at all. They do seem to be, it does seem to be an NTSC configured console running at a PAL speed. But that's not really an issue when the game, when most of the games uh, are 
with the quality that we've seen already. Hang on, I want to get to the bonus stage just to show you more blatant stealing and naughtiness. Or I could die and get a game over. But yeah, you can hear that is the game over music from Balloon Fight. Um, the bonus stage does still use the Balloon Trip music. Not that you'll be able to hear Balloon, not that you'll be able to play Balloon Trip because this does not have a select button. So, as you can see, they've been a bit naughty and uh, you know, just taken off the options on the uh, menu screen. I mean, okay, they've been a bit naughty for other reasons, such as, you know, plagiarism and ROM hacks. But let's uh, try some other games from the first category, which I would sort of say are quote-unquote original games made for these sorts of things. Ah, Strong Pchuk. Oh yeah, it's really weird. You can push certain bot, like certain blocks, but not other blocks that look exactly the same. It doesn't really make any sense. Wonder Ball. I don't even remember what this one is. But it's got that screen again. Oh yeah, you press... You seem to just press A when... Uh, no, you press B for the yellow ones and A for the red ones. And that seems to be the entire game. I don't really understand it. Direction buttons seem to do nothing. It's a very weird game that makes no sense. You know, have you noticed the theme yet? Ah, Apple Chess, which I think is just some sort of variant of like Go or uh, Othello or whatever. Um, I'm going to go here. I don't really know how to play this game. It's also very, very, very slow. But yeah, as you can tell, this has a lot of stuff on it. Balloon Shoot! Again, another... Uh... Oh yeah, it's this one. You just shoot the balloons. You don't even have to like press A, you can just hold A and move it. Move the cursor. It's very bad. And you can divide your score by two, apparently. Let's not bother. But let's see if I can find a uh, reason why the uh, 201 isn't really uh, very applicable. Let's see if I can find an example. Uh, hmm. Oh, I'm trying. How am I not? Maybe Escapeway is one? No, Escapeway is not one that I want to that demonstrates what I want to see. Hmm. This probably isn't either, is it? Well, maybe it is. Yes. But look, it's a top down car racing game where you uh, press a button to go forwards and uh, it's top down and if you touch an enemy, actually you don't explode in this one wow oh maybe you do but yeah it's a top down car racing game you know like uh, maybe let's try awful rushing oh look it's a top down Vaguely car racing game. I mean, I assume that's supposed to be a motorbike. Oh, you press A in this one. Oh, and um, you explode when you get hit. Are you starting to see the pattern here? There's there's several of uh, these uh, car racing ones, if I remember correctly. But I uh, genuinely can't remember which ones are which, because why would I want to remember? Ah, uh, Aimless. It's like Space Harrier, but terrible and first person. And you 
And the, the title is somewhat... Uh, you can't really aim, it doesn't work. The shots take way too long, there's a massive delay between the shots, and it's awful I'm going to stop. But uh, yes, to... Uh, actually, let's find the actual page for it. Yeah, to continue the trend of uh, zero gravity there, being a bit of a ripoff of uh, a Nintendo game, let's have a look at Tennis. Well, Tennis 1, there's no Tennis 2, which I alluded to on the back of the box. And if you're familiar with Nintendo's Tennis, you'll know that that is trying to be the uh, Tennis opening theme. You can select level. And yes, this is Nintendo's Tennis. Uh, I'm probably going to lose the ball straight away because I'm terrible at this game. Oh no, I hit it. But yeah, instead of Mario, you've got a weird um, caterpillar as your umpire. Is it umpire? Is that the word for tennis? I can't remember. And you've got two Master Higginses uh, on the left for some reason. It's hard to tell that's what they are because the uh, video output quality of this is pretty bad. But... Uh, yeah, this is literally a Nintendo's Tennis. It plays fine, but you know, it's a you know, naughty ripoff. Or if you want an even more naughty ripoff, let's have a look at Dada. And you're familiar with Nintendo's arcade games, will notice that this is Popeye. And has an intro that takes ages that you can't skip. And then you accidentally pause because you're trying to skip it. Yes, this weird bear thing is taking the place of Popeye. Um, instead of collecting whatever you collected in the first level of Popeye, you're collecting this. They changed the uh, the aesthetics of this level to sort of be forest themed, sort of. Uh, let, and let's let's uh, get the um, mysterious brown mush. Instead of the spinach, and yeah, it's clearly playing the uh, Popeye theme like music. Uh, they are these these bootleggers were very, very blatant with their uh, knockoffery, needless to say. But the first level of Popeye takes ages, so I'm not going to bother playing it any further. Or let's try bicycle, maybe a ripoff of Excite Bike. No, it's a ripoff of F1 race. There are there is at least one other rip of F1 race on this uh, console. I'm not going to bother showing it to you. It's F1. It's a UFO race. Also, I'm pretty sure I pressed left there. Oh no! The D-pad dying on me or something. Hmm. But yeah, it's it's F1 race, but hacked with new graphics and sounds. I'd rather just play Outrun. But yeah, actually, yeah. UFO race, it's the same. Basically. Except this time you have Time and Scrow. And also, it looks worse because it's supposed to be in space, so they've gotten rid of half the graphics. So it does genuinely just look worse because it's a whole load of nothing. But yeah, there's there's all like a lot of the games on here. Well, I say a lot. Some of the games on here are just you know these sort of ripoffs. I mean, Blockbuster here is a is a uh, ROM hack of Dig Dug Two, which uh, really threw me. Um, I actually quite enjoy Dig Dug Two. I think it's uh, relatively underrated as a game. Sure, it's not as good as the original Dig Dug, but uh, I enjoy the game for what it is. Um, but you know, I would rather play the uh, original game than this sort of knockoff ROM hack of it. But you know, it plays vaguely competently, I suppose. Because it is just a ROM hack of the original Famicom version. But I think one of the. Mo the uh, worst example of this whole ripoffery sort of stuff they've done, Huddle, which is literally Nintendo's pinball. Uh, yeah, 
it, they haven't changed anything except taking off the options on the title screen because there's no select button and scrubbing any mention of the word Nintendo from it. Like this is bordering on like, like legitimate piracy here. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure. You know, Nintendo will probably have a word with whoever is making these consoles if they uh, found out. But Nintendo probably doesn't care because these consoles, you know, have existed for quite a long time. Like, not don't care as in like the way Sega is cool with people doing ROM hacks and stuff, but more just they aren't aware of it. Let's see if I can get into the bonus stage and show you how it's exactly unchanged. Um, I may have to jump to it if it takes ages. So I do want to show it off because it is ridiculous. Or I could just not because you probably know what the uh, bonus stage looks like for pinball. But yeah, when I originally got this, I was going through this and sort of thinking, oh, you know, there's all these sort of, you know, knockoffy sort of original games that I thought, you know, yeah, yeah, I know how these go, you know, Assart, you know, oh, it's really weird and horrible, you know. But then going through was, you know, because I was going through sort of in order, and I was like, hmm, high jump one. And it seemed, you know, like an actual legit game. Um, I can't remember how you play this. But yeah, going through those and then getting to, uh, I think, yeah, I think it was when I got to uh, Zero Gravity and, you know, seeing that it was literally a uh, balloon fight. Yeah, then, and then Hoodle especially. Then it made me realise, oh look, there are all sorts of weird like knockoffs on here, like sort of ROM hack knockoffs. I mean let's boot up Airway for example. It's Zevius, or Zevius however you want to pronounce it. It plays fine as well because again it's just a ROM hack, you know, a naughty ROM hack that's been put out on a sh you know, shop floor. You know, and it all works as it should because it is just the original ROM with new graphics. So I thought, oh, this is, you know, relatively promising. I mean, there's also this Mars game, which is like decent. It's like a decently smooth space shooter, you know. Like, look at this shit moves quite smoothly. I mean, the video might not be, because it's having to be into this and all that. But like, the enemy formations move smoothly. You know, it's, it's all pretty competent. Like, this surely must be a ROM hack, but I don't know what of. But if it's not a ROM hack and it is one of these original sort of bootleggy games, then good job, bootleggers. But then, oh yeah, and the uh, Rescue Cuck as well. Let me just uh, let that sink in. Rescue Cuck. Which, uh, again, if you're familiar with Nintendo, it's Donkey Kong Jr. Except it looks awful. Um. Why am I playing this? I could just be playing Donkey Kong Jr. on my 3DS or Switch. But yeah, you get you get through these, but then you get past these, and you know it just goes right back into being terrible. Burbles, for example, it's a really bad shooty game where you can press B to turn your car around and it makes no sense and also it takes ages once you've shot someone for them to leave the screen do you want to know why that's because burbles appears to be some sort of weird hack of another game on the system bubble which as you can see exactly the same you see you know, there's a thing flying over there you shoot bubbles at fish, and they stay in the bubble of it before they go off screen. So Burbles is quite obviously a rip-off of Bubbles, which is on the same system, or Bubble as it was called. Abscondi. Yeah, it's this game you may have seen from other more popular channels on when they've done things. In fact, uh, this exact ROM set has been featured on YouTube before, um, 
the channel uh, Rerez has done their series called like the worst ever series or whatever and one of the systems like one of the plug and play systems they've had on there does appear to have this exact same ROM set Forest Adventure another original game because after a while they do all become original games and I've walked off and killed myself yeah, it's the world's worst platformer. Actually, that's a lie. I'm sure they're the worst platformers. But it's not good. But yeah, so all in all... Wow, that was weird. It just lost signal. Like, so... I don't know. But yeah, all in all... Yeah, this isn't technically a good system. I mean, the controls are a bit mushy. And it's, you know... It's got all sorts of legally dubious knockoffs on it and loads and loads of terrible games. But the ones that are dubious knockoffs are mostly knockoffs of good games. M mostly. I mean, Spa here is a knockoff, well, rum hack of Urban Champion, but Urban Champions is a bit rubbish. But yeah, most of the knockoff ones are of decently fun games. But yeah, legally dubious to say the least. And most of the games on here are just awful. I mean, Magic Egg is... Y you press A or B when an egg goes to the side and it makes a weird graphic. And if you don't, it makes a different weird graphic. It's pretty bad. And also composite video. So it's not really very good for modern TVs, even though it's being sold you know, in the modern day sort of era. In conclusion, yeah, don't bother getting one of these unless you're fascinated with weird tat like I am because I watch too much Ashens. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video and you want to check out some of my other stuff, I've got a couple of videos up on the end card here. And if you want to be notified if I make new videos, then feel free to subscribe. And if you really liked the video and you want other people you know to watch it, feel free to share it around.